Greenock Early Learning Centre, an area ambience test over one hour taken prior to the structure's build to distinguish the required glazing and sound insulation for an elevation on one side of the structure. In this case, access to the site is unobtainable due to asbestos, and so the reference meter has been placed outside the fence at the perimeter on the same axis as the elevation under testing. The reference microphone was placed 1.2 meters from the ground and was placed on the inside of the pavement to let pedestrians by. To avoid overemphasis of traffic noise, behind the meter is a broken up fence and so the reflections are not a factor. Had this fence been a solid wall, it could have provided up to 3 dB of interference, so this wouldn't have been a suitable location for the meter to be placed. By doing an ambient volume attenuation calc, the noise pollution reaching the new structure can be calculated. J.D. Pierce Environmental Acoustic Test The aim of this job is to distinguish the noise impact of a new factory building within the company's premises. The new structure has been completely closed down for an hour and a half to ensure that we have an hour window to assess the area's ambient noise level with the new sound source removed. We measured the ambient noise from the perimeter of the site nearest to the closest residential area, or receptor. The noise meter should be calibrated before each use as always, and then logging mode selected as we're going to be taking noise measurements or making a log over an hour period. This hour has been divided into five minute segments to deal with anomalies and get a more real average measurement of LEQ. The first hour tests for the residual noise level with the building removed. We then took an ambient measurement over a second hour when the factory was turned back on and operations were being carried out as they typically would in the building on a day-to-day -day basis. Generally, if there is less than or equal to a 5 dB increase, there should be no complaints from nearby residents. Sometimes in jobs like these, the ambient noise threshold at the location of the meter is too loud to discern the impact of a certain sound source. This is due to other noise sources being more dominant in that location. This could include road traffic noise, for instance. In cases such as these, either additional or alternate techniques should be employed. One technique to compensate for cars coming by and raising up the average noise energy and interfering with the LEQ reading is to count each car as it passes. The amount of cars, along with a predetermined car noise energy value, can be multiplied to cancel out. The job will dictate whether or not this technique is appropriate. This job did not require that we compensate for a dominant noise near the noise meter. However, it was important that we do note down every loud noise that occurred which was not indicative of the new building's noise emittance. This includes making a note of the exact time of things like a close by dog's bark or a vehicle from the other building passing by the meter and so forth. These could then be referenced later to explain a particularly high reading in any 5 minute testing segment. This method is just one of the effective techniques for conducting a noise assessment of this kind. Another, perhaps more accurate way to do it, in the event of a problem highlighted in the initial test, could be done the following way. First, we would have to identify the loudness of the structure as a whole by combining the levels of all the noise sources within the space. Measuring at many points around the warehouse and then averaging these figures would give us the average SPL of the entire structure with reverberance, that is to say, inside. The structure's attenuation would then be calculated based on the materials that make it up, which would allow for the total noise emitted to the surrounding area to be deduced. Using distance attenuation calc, we could test the fall-off up to any residential area.